three and a half hours. That's how long it took me to defeat Dornstein in Snow. From oh. this being my first Dark Souls game, to me wielding a toothpick weapon, and getting hit with the same freaking attack every single time, the game became a struggle the moment I stepped into these gates in Anne Orlando. But that's also when I changed from liking Dark Souls to loving it. So much that I craved the challenge and just went with the unupgraded Drake Sword for the rest of the game. Because of this, Ornstein and Smo made such a lasting impression and became my favorite characters of the series, I think. So I wanted to draw them both. Around that time, Kentaro Miura, the author of Berserk and a huge influence on the Soulsborne series, unfortunately passed away. I'm a very casual Berserk fan, if I'm even allowed to be called one. I've only watched the old anime and uh, the movies, and even though they're in my top 10, I don't really know anything past the Golden Age arc besides stuff I read on the wiki. But I have seen the art and I do own a few of the volumes just to look at. As someone who struggles to make even a single comic page, I always looked up to Miura Sensei's work. Each panel looked like a full-on illustration you'd see from like, <laughs> like a modern day Gustav Dor. And it wasn't just incredible how many stories could be told in a single picture. But from the little I've seen, I feel like it's obvious that he truly loved his work. So after his death, I did want to pay a tribute to him and his legacy on Dark Souls. I guess it was also sort of a event piece as well. I don't know, his death definitely hit me and spending time on this drawing helped me with it. So anyways, let's get to it. Sorry in advance for all the camera jittering. I'm always all over the place when I draw. I tried cutting out a lot of it, but there's still a fair amount that's there. In any case, for this piece, I wanted to show the duality between the powerhouse that is Smo and the very fast, agile Ornstein uh, doing his lunge attack. This is a lot different than my normal art style, and because I was trying to emulate Miura Sensei's work, I ended up going back and forth with how I wanted to approach things. Uh, a lot of trial and error. I've like never seen this pattern in game and I purchased Smo's set and didn't see it, but I saw several photos on Google with this pattern and I thought it looked really cool so I decided to include it. A lot of the time you'll see me do some really ugly scribbles, and uh, that's because I wasn't really sure how it would look, so I'd blot down like rough details, and if I liked it, then I'd do it all over again, uh, but like more neat. The chainmail is an example of what I thought was challenging for me, because I have no idea why, but I have this psychological thing. I can't do extremely precise details. I don't know, it's so weird, but this is how I've been since I was a kid. So like, have you ever tried drawing a spiral but try to make it as condensed as possible without the lines touching each other? Uh, I don't know why, but I literally cannot do that without wincing. And like something in my brain just like gets jolted and I have to look away. Probably a bad thing to have as an artist, but whatever. Uh, so I think I spent like two to three different sessions drawing this mail.
For the helmet main, I referenced Guts's cape for the flowing lines and shape. The electricity was in the style of the famous Zod panel, though I wasn't really sure how to emulate the softness of it, uh, so I don't think I did a good job at it, but uh, I tried. By the way, you've seen me post references. I always use references to draw, but for this piece I used a lot more than I usually do because the goal was to emulate someone else's style. But I had a lot of fun trying to analyze everything and I feel like I got to notice details and panels that I would have missed before. Most of these lines I'm drawing manually. There are actually a lot easier ways to do this digitally, but I wanted to try to make this look as traditionally done as possible. I also use a very archaic program to draw, so uh, my version doesn't even have a text tool. I had to make sure that Smo's side of the drawing was a lot more destructive with like debris shooting everywhere. Sort of wanted to make it look like he was uh, digging his hammer straight in through the floor in like super anime style. I initially didn't want to use any major digital shortcuts, but my window was looking sort of trash. <laughs> In perspective, it's very hard for me. I don't really do that often. So I ended up going to the Clip Studio Paint to use the symmetry tool to draw.
Here I just screenshotted my drawing and reversed it so I could have easy reference to draw the other side of the armor. So also, this isn't really what Smo's armor looks like, but it's sort of hard to find like high quality references, so I just took some liberties. Okay, the sound effects. I don't know much about Japanese sound effects, but at first I wrote Bachi Bachi, which uh, I referenced the panel of Kilua from Hunter x Hunter with his electricity sparking and making that noise. but. Uh, I eventually changed it to Gaga because it sounded a lot more impactful. I, I referenced one panel here and the style of it as well. Then I made the dododo a little bit thicker to add to the intensity of it. I was looking at Miura Sensei's penmanship and I think that sometimes for the sound effects he uses like a brush pen or a marker pen or something. So I wanted to emulate that by drawing a scratchy brush texture rather than a solid black. Also in some of his panels, especially the large ones, the sound effects are see-through. So I did the same as well. In retrospect, I feel like it made Ornstein's side a little bit too busy, but it's too late to change that now. <laughs> Okay, right here. You might notice that some parts of the piece have regressed, like Smo's armor, the debris clowns, the sound effects. We've time traveled back. I may have forgotten I did all of that and I opened up an outdated file and started working on it. Eventually I did catch myself and I just brought over the layers I worked on to the next file, but yeah, I have a pea brain memory. In the end, there were a lot of things that I felt that I could have done better. For one, I would have blocked out the perspective instead of like eyeballing 80% of it. Uh, <laughs> I didn't intend to spend as much time drawing this, but I wanted to make sure that I gave this piece as much love as I could. Another thing that I would have changed is probably keeping track of my pen size. 
I know that Kentaro Miura ended up transitioning to the digital medium at some point, but I feel like his line work, uh, albeit different from his older pages, still had this traditional feel to it. My line work was all over the place, and if I were to ever do something like this again, I would probably try to stay within a specific size range to emulate a G-Pen or another traditional mangaka tool. Lastly, I feel like I still have no idea how Miura Sensei shades so intricately. When he does use toning, he blends it into his inking seamlessly, so at a far glance, it doesn't even look like he uses toning. I think that might be the biggest struggle that I had, and I know I was not able to emulate it. But at the very least, I finished it. Usually, large-scale pieces like this, I drop, and they never see the light of day. So I am happy about that. Sixty to eighty hours. That's roughly how long it took to complete this piece, over the course of several months. I started this hoping to even step a millimeter into the shoes of one of the greatest mangaka to exist. And I finished this with even more questions and appreciation for his craft. But if there was one thing that was certain all the way through, it was just one simple thought. Thank you, Miura Sensei, for everything. <laughs>